Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Plant Fanatics. Today we're talking about what it takes to be successful in plant propagation, so stay tuned. Here at Plant Fanatics, we've amassed a following of 500,000 people, and we are so blessed to have that, and with it comes the opportunity to talk to a lot of people just starting out in this art form. When it comes to propagating plants, there is certainly a learning curve just like anything in life. If you're playing a sport for the first time, you're probably not gonna be very good at it, and if you're caring for a plant for the first time, you're probably not gonna be very good at it. I can speak for myself when I say I've killed thousands of dollars worth of plants over my career. And that's how you gain experience. And my advice to you guys would be to find a plant that's readily available in your area that's typically propagated from cutting, and maybe even pretty easy to root from cutting for you to practice with. You certainly don't wanna go out and find the most rare and expensive cutting to propagate for your first time, because chances are pretty high you're gonna kill that cutting. Now there is a science to plant propagation and there is an art form to plant propagation. The science is the knowledge of how to do something and the art form is getting your hands dirty and actually experiencing it and know what you're looking for. I can tell you don't overwater your cuttings, but until you actually overwater your cuttings and kill them, you don't know what you're looking for exactly. Uh, obviously if I sit there with a garden hose and I'm just you know filling a container with water, you could say, oh, there's too much water. But there's a fine line in propagation of the right amount of water and too much water and just a little bit too much, maybe enough to cause rot and kill your cutting. So you really have to have experience and know what you're looking for. Some of the biggest mistakes and the easiest to fix that I'm seeing beginners make is that they are overwatering their cuttings and that they don't realize how important temperature is when it comes to forming roots on those cuttings. You would not believe how many people are taking their cuttings from one room to another room because at night this room's too cold and this room's a little warmer or the sun comes out in this room and it's warmer and they think that that warmth at that time is gonna do them good. And it does if it's consistent, guys. If you get a heat mat and you're making sure that soil's staying roughly 70 to 75 degrees, you're gonna be so successful. There can be temperature fluctuations on top of those cuttings, but in that soil, temperature needs to be consistent. We do not want any fluctuations from daytime to nighttime. Keep it roughly 70 to 75 degrees. Another huge thing is that watering is not done on a schedule like a lot of beginners believe. Watering is something that you have to watch out for. You need to let the soil be moist, but not overly saturated. And when you see that it's drying out, that's when you water. Uh, you know, whether that be sticking your finger an inch in the soil and seeing that it's dry or just visibly being able to tell that soil's drying out, I probably need to water it. And making sure that you add perlite or vermiculite or something like that into the soil that's really gonna have adequate drainage. These are key things to understand in propagating cuttings and they're hands down the biggest mistakes that I see people making. When it comes to the sand propagation method, specifically, I have seen both ends of the spectrum. I see people who are overwatering because they're afraid it's gonna dry out, and I have seen people that are underwatering because they're afraid they're gonna rot their cuttings. And it needs to be a happy medium. You don't get to be on one end of the spectrum and be successful. You have to be right in the middle. Uh, and that comes with practice. You are not gonna be good at first, and this is key to plant propagation. You have to understand that there is an art form to it. You can't just watch a video, go out and be successful. You need to learn, you need to get your hands dirty, and you need to do it. And if you fail, don't be afraid to change things up from how you were doing it. Just because you failed at a certain method doesn't mean the method is bad per se. It could be, that's possible. But it could also be that if you, if you just tweaked one little thing, you'd be more successful. So maybe when it came to your soil, if you added a little extra perlite for drainage, that soil wouldn't have been too saturated and that cutting wouldn't have, have rotted. You know, some, there is such a thing as uh, not having adequate drainage when it comes to your cuttings and rotting them out very easily. So um, these are just key things to think about and they're things that can really make you a lot more successful when it comes to propagation. But I also wanted to put out there that learning curve, guys. If you think that you're just gonna come into something and do it for the first time and be the best, it, it's, not to be rude, but it's kind of delusional thinking, you know? If you were gonna walk out on the basketball court for the first time and you thought to yourself, I'm the best one out here, I'm gonna be the best one at doing this, I've watched so many videos, it's delusional thinking, guys. You have to get your hands dirty, you have to put in the hours, you have to put in the dedication, just like anything else. And these are big mistakes that I'm seeing made. I believe you guys can do it. Keep at it. Uh, you're gonna be super successful and 
don't let your your spirits be dampened, guys, when you fail. Uh, get back up, do it again, uh, and like I said, find something that's easy to propagate and start out there and learn what you're doing and then work your way into the more difficult things to do. A lot of people are saying to me, you know, Chad, you're always showing us how to propagate uh, figs and figs are easy to propagate. That statement in and of itself shows that somebody hasn't spent enough time in the craft because there are so many different varieties of figs. Some are easier to root than others and every cutting is different. I've had cuttings that have rooted in less than a week and then I have cuttings that have taken over two months to propagate and unless you know what you're looking for, you are not gonna be successful. You guys, thanks so much for tuning in. If you like the video, give it a like, share with any of your friends who might be failing at rooting their cuttings and it might be one of the issues and maybe they need to understand this and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the AmericanFigCompany.com. We are launching our rooted plants. So if you are interested in getting your hands, maybe you don't want to propagate. Maybe you watch this video and you're like, ah, whatever, I'll just buy some plants. Go to the American Fig Company. We also sell rooted plants. Thanks so much, guys.